All right, so I definitely don't want to start the router with it in the down position. I forgot to raise it back up, so don't do that again. Don't do that again, I'm talking to you. Yeah, I took a little bit of meat off of the edge of the truss rod channel, but fortunately it's going to be covered by the fretboard. God, I hate that I did that, uh, but I mean, I'm so glad I didn't go any farther, but I don't think it's going to cause any structural issues with the neck and the fingerboard will be glued. So uh, I just hate that I did it. But anyway, I'm at the point where I need to go ahead and, you know, make the fretboard, taper the fretboard and bind the fretboard and do all that kind of stuff. So, but I've got some design ideas and things I need to decide on. So, um, you know, my last guitar, I had a plain headstock with no inlay in it i didn't have my name or anything in it except for on the label on the inside well i'm kind of i don't know why i'm afraid of doing inlay i don't want to mess up and then have it all look gappy i'm gonna have to practice on things that are not guitars to get better at it uh i've seen people just put like a badge on on the headstock in particular the first person i saw doing this or the first place i ever saw it was tim kill and he puts a badge right on his headstock, like a circular badge. And it's got his logo. It looks, I thought that looks awesome, first of all. I love the way it looks. And then, after that, a few months later, I saw Dion Guitars do the same similar thing. So I found some badges that have my last name initial, the M, and I ground, it had a little hook on it, so I ground that off. So I thought, well, maybe if I buy these, I can, it'll be easy enough to drill a little circular hole with a, with a Forster bit and inlay this into that hole. That way I can avoid doing any kind of inlay. But, I mean, they're smaller than I thought they would be. Too small for what I was wanting to do. So then I thought, well, you know, I could put it here, but it, it just looks weird. I don't know, it just something about it doesn't look right. What if I put it down here at the bottom somewhere? And then, you know, I've seen a lot of people putting like a, a inlay in the 12th fret right here, just a different color wood to kind of mark where the 12th fret was. And I, I think that looks awesome. I love it. So then I thought, well, what if I take some of the black acacia left over from my engraft, and what if I did that down here at the bottom and make the bottom of the fretboard be this acacia color, and then I could put the badge in there. So I got all this these thoughts of trying to figure out what to do. You know, the easy thing to do would just be just don't do it and just put the fretboard down. I don't know, I don't know why I want to make this more difficult for myself, but I really want to do this. I like I like the way it looks. Seems to me like this is a good good enough guitar to test this on. Oh, but now I gotta cut this out. <laughs> oh my gosh, I don't know why I gotta make this more difficult to figure out what to do. So I'll let you know when I get there what I'm gonna do. Okay, I think the first thing I'm gonna do is score around the end. So I got this uh, marking gauge set up just shy of the thickness of that inlay piece. can't believe I'm going to go ahead and do this. Okay, here we go. I got the uh, Dremel set up. So, hope I don't screw this up. Okay. You know, it would be awesome as if I had better light. Oh my gosh, I cannot see. Oh, I'm trying not to block the shot too much. I had to pull down my mask because I, I had to blow the, the sawdust away. Right, I think what I decided to do while I was doing this, take all this off first and then use a chisel to pair that off. Because I can lay the chisel flat and just bump right up against that fret slot. I think that'll be the safer way to go instead of trying to get all the way up to that fret slot with the Dremel. So I just decided that while I was cutting. So let me go ahead and get the rest of this off. You know, when I get to another stopping point, I'll catch back up with you and show you how it looks. I need a square at the end of this. I'm gonna just go ahead and use my fretboard like a shooting board. Okay, I've got a plan. Hope it works. Let's go ahead and do it. I think that's going to do it for now. 
Oh, let that dry for a while. All right. I don't normally wear tall socks and shoes, but I was doing yard work earlier, so there you go. All right, so it's on there. So I've got to go, I'm going to trim this off, but I mean, I've got to make one end of this fretboard flat first before I do anything anyway, so. But so far, so good. I just feel like this one makes more sense for this little piece right here. Make sure that I'm. Oh! Ah. Make sure that I'm square. Um, to get it flat, well, the same thickness as the fretboard, I ran it through the drum sander just little by little until it finally uh, got all the way down as flat as this. And I checked it with a uh, digital caliper just to make sure. I didn't want to take anything off of this surface. So now I'm going to go back to the drum sander and thickness this fretboard from the backside uh, to get it down to where it needs to be uh, so that I can do the taper on it and uh, binding and all that stuff. All right, I've been working on this for a while. I've got the fretboard kind of clamped center. And I wanted to come down here and just kind of draw in some shapes. Um, my last guitar just went straight across. Um, this guitar was going to do just a curve. And I thought maybe I should make this part on this side thicker. And just gently curve down there. That way I could put that little M. I think I'm going to go ahead and try it and just see how it turns out. So I guess i got to cut this piece out first. And then I'll meet you when I'm ready to start binding. Uh, I figured I'd jump in and just show you what I was doing. You can see I cut that off. That looks pretty good. I like that. That looks okay. And of course I've got some maple lamination that I'm going to be putting in between all this too. So I'm not really sure exactly how to go about doing that whether i glue this to this first just tack it down with something and then glue this i don't know i gotta figure all that out well messed it up i was cutting straight down and then i tweaked the piece and cut an angle into it so it's not long enough anymore so i gotta do this all over again the last guitar took me seven pieces to finally get it right all right let me catch you up before i get started i'm gonna show you what i decided I'm going to go ahead and attach the maple strips first to the sides here and then worry about doing the binding. So I'm going to do this in a couple of steps because I've been thinking about this all day. So I decided I, I needed to take the cutoff piece and I can use that as a clamp. So here's the piece of maple. I'll put a little glue here, put that there, and then I'll clamp that piece on. Okay, so that's going to dry for a little while, and then we'll see how it goes. Well, I went ahead and just clamped on the outside purfling. It was a little hectic. I did a dry run just to make sure. Um, it was a little hectic, and then I decided to pick it up off my table and move it in here, which was almost a tragedy. But uh, there it is, drying. And I'll, uh, of course, let you know what it looks like. It's going to have to be tomorrow uh, because it's uh, Betty by time. All right, as you can see, I've got the purfling attached um, all the way across, and uh, I'm ready to glue the binding on. Now, one comment I will say is, uh, it would be better if I had put the purfling on first, and then measured my binding. It turns out it's exactly the right length it needs to be. So I must have been just a little bit over. Now, it's easier to see, too, with the white purfling on there, to see the dark wood against the light color wood and I can see more exactly where it stops at. Um, but middle note for next time or if you ever do this 
Put your perfect on first and then measure for your binding miters and all that stuff. Okay, you have to watch out. I gotta do some uh, some work, okay? Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and uh, add some more tape to it. I feel pretty good about it. I feel pretty good. Hope it turns out okay. Uh, do this real carefully. Okay. Okay, it's the next morning, but before I go to work, it's about 6.30 right now. We'll go ahead and get the clamps off just so I can see how it looks. So let's go ahead and do it. All right, it's on there. Doesn't look like it's shifted at all. It looks flat everywhere. I don't see any gaps, which is good. Awesome. I've got these pieces here. This used to be one piece of black acacia and I've cut it in half and I've kind of started to get like a book match looking kind of appearance. So I think I'm going to make my heel cap out of this. I got the glue and I'm ready to go. So let's go ahead and do it. I think that'll be okay. So now I just got to let it dry. I've been working on the back of the heel, shaving it down right past the purfling line. Because I had an idea, and I'll see if I could pull it off. So this is the heel cap I made. I've got it cut, you know, about the size. But I was thinking, what if this purfling line continued up around the heel cap? I've seen people do this on Instagram. And then what if I put a piece of bloodwood in front of that, and that would kind of tie in the red color on the back. So it took a, long, took a while to get the perfling just right but I honed the plain blade like really sharp and got it real nice and sharp and then started just trimming away little by little but the perfling line just kind of continues up and I would have a little piece of red in front of that and that would tie in with the backstrap bloodwood and then the paduke reddish color rosette and then I've also got some bloodwood bridge pins which I, I remembered I bought those so whether I'll use those or not I don't know but I'll see what they look like but anyway, I think I'm going to do this. So I need to glue the heel cap to the two veneers and then uh, get the heel cap glued on. Then I can start shaping the neck. So I'm just going to keep doing that until I get it even on the bottom with no gaps. Hey, I got a sneak peek for you. Check it out. Got the sides for guitar number three bent today. All right, so um, I know the thing's probably gonna slip around a little bit. I put some uh, wax paper. I kind of cut a cut a spot out in the middle and slid this up around the tenon. Because when I glue this on, I want it to be at the same level as the the heel, and this need to be the same level on the bottom. So that's why I put the wax paper all the way up against the up to the fretboard. Okay. Trying to get take care of some of this glue squeeze out. All 
I don't even know if I'm still in frame. Probably can't see anything I'm doing. I'm just checking at the bottom to make sure that it's all the way pressed down. I'm gonna add this one in there. There. I think that's it. All right, it's been overnight, so let's go ahead and get the clamps off and see what it looks like. Well, it slid over a little bit farther than I wanted it to. I think I should still be okay, because I left it a little wide on purpose so that I can work down to the final width. I'm excited to get on to the next part, to get this next shaped. And in the meantime, I'm working on guitar number three, right? So I'm probably be jumping in between that one and this one. Uh, but I am planning on making a video series out about that one, but it's not going to be the same kind of talky talky kind of go into detail kind of videos. All right, I'm going to try something a little different because I don't want to just repeat myself for the third time just talking about all the same stuff. I want, I want those to be um, a little bit different format, which is what I'm shooting for. So anyway, stick around for those. Subscribe if you like to keep up with me and, and uh, watch that build too. So I uh, appreciate you watching and I'll see you on the next uh, video. All right, bye.